Zimbal Zombal Zibbity Zitch. On today's video, I am dressed as a witch. It's Witch Only Explained. It's gone spooked over spectacular. Two. It's a nice friend you got there, YouTube. Welcome back to Khan Spooktober Spectacular, everybody. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And today, let's talk witches. Because yes, it is about to be Halloween, and that is the time of the year, supposedly, where the line between the spirit world and the real world is closest, is thinnest. Much like the barrier between a digital world, a human world, or perhaps another world. That's right, we're talking about Witchelny, the world of magical witches. Because while the nature of the digital world itself changes from from season to season, game to game, etc. It's generally agreed that there is kind of one digital world or one of many digital worlds on the same server or multiverse, whatever you want to call it. But there exist dimensions or worlds outside of that digital world paradigm. In Digimon canon, the main two are Iliad, the world of the Olympos 12, and Witchelny, the world of magic. However, technically there may be other worlds outside of these two, they're just not fully designated as other worlds, including Never Everland, the world created by Petermon and Tinkmon, and the world of Tamagotchi, as Digimon like Nanimon are said to originally be Tamagotchi, in his case Oyajichi, who have broken out of the Tamagotchi world and into the digital world. But Witchelny is our spooky spotlight for today, originating in the Magical Witches V-Pet in 1998, initially seemingly as divorced from Digimon as any other V-Pet, and instead of evolving and battling creatures, you would be training a little witch. According to a blog post by Analyzing Adventure, who I have credited in the description, there were four clans or families of witches in Witchelny, each based and specializing in one of the four elements. Earthland for earth, Baluluna for wind, Enayuge for fire, and Aquari for water. Water, fire, air, and dirt. Fucking Magnus, how do they work? The four models of the toy were each themed after one of these clans, each coloured according to which clan the book represented and the witches you raised. One of the main mechanics of the toy was potion mixing slash item creation, getting all of the items in the game by having your witch try and create them. Reaching this goal required you to connect your book to another one to get items from another clan's witch that yours wasn't able to mix with. The other main mechanic of the toy also required connecting your book with another one which would give you the option to either cure or curse the witch. You know, all this talk of witches and potions has got me thinking back to Hansel and Gretel, and the fact that her house was made of all kinds of candy and treats, which is, let's face it, everyone's favourite part about Halloween. And if you like candy, you're gonna love the segue to this ad. Has this ever happened to you? That's a chunky wrist. Mm. Or maybe your massive collection of dim cards keeps causing you trouble. Mm. Well, fret no more, your Digimon worries are solved by today's sponsor, Zenin TCG. Yes, this video is sponsored by Zenin TCG. I've worked with Zenin TCG a bunch in the past. They are absolutely wonderful and they are dedicated to getting items for Digimon fans. They currently have pre orders open for the brand new, recently re announced Digimon Tamers Dim set, which is Gilmon, Renamon, and Terriamon. Each one of those Dim cards comes with four storage capsules and four Digivolution timers. Get those pre orders on Zenin TCG, but also Zenin TCG. TCG is expanding into their own items and are going to be selling both Digimon Vital Bracelet and Digivice V as well as Dim Storage Cases. This is what they call their candy line. You can get the Zenin TCG Dim Card Candy Case, which is customizable with inner and outer colors to make the case of your choice, currently with 10 colors available. It fits eight Dim Cards as well as a tray to hold the cards that the Dim Cards come in, as well as eight Dim Card covers to keep your Dim Card safe when you're on the move and of course all have collectible sliding cases and then there is also the Zenin TCG Candy VB extended straps. They add an extra 40 millimeters for the chunky wrists out there just like me. They're a simple watch band design for everyday use. They're not going to look like a kid's toy when you're at the gym or the office but they do come in wonderful bright candy colors. So check out the links in the description. Go get yourself a dim card holder, a VB extender or even a pre-order on those Digimon Tamers dim cards and to celebrate the launch of the dim card holder and the extenders, Zenin TCG is currently having a promotion. If you add an item to your basket and then also add the dim card holder or the VB extender, you will get 5% off these new Zenin TCG candy items. So check out that link, let them know I sent you. Thank you so much to Zenin TCG for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the witches. So Magical Witches was not a million miles away from Digimon, but certainly gave its own spin on the V-Pet genre and I think the whole potion mixing thing is a super fun idea. However, this 
This is a Digimon video, and much like the potions, the worlds of Digimon and Witchelney would eventually have to mix. And that began with the idea of Witchelney being introduced in the Digimon reference book in 2007 when it first launched, with the reference book entry for Wizardmon, which states, an advanced demon man Digimon that came from the digital world of another dimension. In its native digital world, Witchelney, it mastered the sorcery, high level programming language of fire and earth. And thus the connection was cemented. Wizardmon was a creature from Witchelney. This is even referenced in an audio drama with the adventure version of Wizardmon talking to Tailmon. In the Before the World Ends audio drama that accompanied the Digimon Adventure Blu-ray set, Wizardmon literally tells Tailmon that he's just from a different world, straight up, although he doesn't specify Witchelney. Likes to keep his little secrets. But Wizardmon isn't alone. Other Digimon have crossed over from Witchelney to the digital world, including Sorcerymon, Witchmon, Medieval Dukemon, which I I find really interesting that they specified. This Dukemon variant being from Witchelney implies that there is sort of a Dukemon for every world, not just the digital world. And that maybe even things like the digital hazard exist in Witchelney. And if so, what is the difference between a Digimon and a witch and a human? Also, Mistymon and Flare Wizardmon are also from or connected to Witchelney in addition to Wizardmon X antibody by virtue of being Wizardmon's ex-antibody, but notable Digimon in the Wizardmon line, like Impmon and Wisemon, have never been shown to have true connection to Witchelney. This might imply that moving from Witchelney to the digital world makes things like magic turn into data like they talk about in Wizardmon's reference book listing, and that creatures like Wisemon, while seemingly very Witchelney inspired, are sort of a combination of both the attributes and possibly like background radiation or data of both Witchelney and the digital world, kind of a combination of the two, and may also imply that the entire state of a Digimon changes when it moves from Witchelney to the digital world or vice versa, meaning that it might gain the ability to Digivolve, which is something it didn't really have in Witchelney, which kind of focused on aging, like they said in the Analyzing Adventure post. And Analyzing Adventure points out which Wizardmon and Wizardmon's two variants can all evolve into a Wisemon, thus connecting these Digimon through evolution. Wisemon is also connected to Piedmon, but here's where it gets interesting. All six of these Digimon are indeed of the Demon Man type. And just like Witchmon and Wizardmon that are said to come from another dimension, so is Piedmon. In Piedmon's reference book entry, it says the following, Demon Man Digimon have many mysterious qualities, and since demon and undead species are basically beings from another reality, their true forms are not totally understood. And they go on to say, like Astromancer has pointed out, Wisemon's reference book entry mentions an item called the Book that Wisemon has in its possession. The Book allows Wisemon to travel through space and time, the book is connected to. The book is something that is also mentioned in the adventure novels. It's an item Wizardmon brought with him from the dimension he came from, and of course, what did the original V-Pet toys get associated with quite a lot? Four Elements Communication Book, The Secret Magical Book. So yes, while Digimon like Wisemon and Piedmon at first may not have a direct connection to Witchelney, posts like these by analysing Adventure, who of course, again, credit in the description, put a ton of effort into their blog post, which I am hugely thankful for, shows that not only is there Witchelney and Iliad, but potentially this world of demon men, and how Digimon like Wisemon, if they aren't from Witchelney, are kind of created through this symbiosis of the digital world and magic, like I hypothesized. It also then begs the question, what do creatures look like in Witchelney? Does Wizardmon look like a Wizardmon? Does Witchmon look like a Witchmon? Or are they other creatures? Are they other humans? Other witches? Wizardmon is very humanoid looking, so did he look this way in Witchelney? Perhaps Wizardmon is a very literal little boy from Witchelney just wanting to learn magic so badly he accidentally stumbled into a parallel dimension. A lost little boy who just wants to go home but has to do what it takes along the way to survive. Makes his death and adventure even sadder, huh? However, for all this talk of creatures coming from Witchelney, there is one Digimon who did the opposite. The mega form of one of my absolute favourite recently created Digimon, Hexablaumon. Yes, according to his reference book listing, a legendary magic knight Digimon that only those who have mastered ice sorcery, a high level programming language, there it is again, that magic is programming in the digital world, are said to be able to evolve to. It protected other Digimon until the very end when the digital world was visited by an ice age long ago, and was later rumoured to have moved to another dimension's Witchelney. Shout out to Hexablaumon, who became such a talented ice magic user, he decided not just to protect Digimon, but when an ice age presumably 
completely eradicated most of the digital world, he moved on over to Witchelney to go help them too. I love this kind of idea of the inverse to the Wizardmon, Witchmon, etc. situation of a Digimon who crossed over to Witchelney, with Hexablaumon being in near permanent residence there, owning his magical skills even more so, in a world where magic may actually be magic, not just programming language, maybe? This also places him in a sort of witch elite alongside Wizardmon and Witchmon, though Hexablaumon has mastered one element, ice, whereas Wizardmon has mastered fire and earth, and Witchmon has mastered wind and water, which accounts for all four books of the magical witch's world. However, ice isn't one of those books. However, Hexablaumon originates from the digital world, where there are more elements showed off, and it's also possible within Witchelney, ice magic could be considered a powerful form of water magic, or perhaps a combination of two magics, like wind and water. Something I'd love Bandai to address, in fact, the elemental side of Digimon I think has often been shied away from because of the fact that obviously they don't want to be too much like Pokemon, instead favouring like the data virus vaccine thing, but in the RPGs you do still see the elemental side factor in, and I'd love for it to be something a little bit more kind of talked about or focused on outside of just like little mentions because we don't want to be too much like Pokemon. But that ultimately is basically all we know about Witchelney. The lore is sparse, and as no new Magical Witches books have been made, we may never get more information on the world of Witchelney and the life forms that resided there. But nonetheless, I think a fascinating piece of Digimon or Digimon adjacent media. And I just had to talk about it for the Spooktober Spectacular. Do me a favour and go check out Analyzing Adventures blog post in the description. A lot of what I've talked about here was put so succinctly by them that I just basically had to quote them because it just sounded better than what I could come up with. And they really put in a lot of thought into how these Digimon and Witch only might connect. It's a brilliant, concise read, highly recommend it. I'm gonna go eat snacks and watch scary movies, but before I do that, let's thank some channel members. The amazing sovereigns, Dogukan and Night12. Thank you so much guys for being sovereigns. It is an amazing gesture. Thank you so much. The killer Digi Destin, Super Embro, Metallic Pool, Andrew Sobel, Anthony Bontomassi, Reese Williams, Sad Uncle Callum and Crimson Dragon Slayer, Digi Destin, you're killing it. And the Tamers, Salmon Slayers, Seven Wolves Rule, Theo Navarro, Car Ghosty, The Blessed Rain, Sam Mallow, Erin Harpy, Emily, and Mike McNulty. Thank you, Tamers, and to everyone in the Khan Club for supporting the channel. Hope you're enjoying the early access videos, and I'll see you next time when we go digital. Bye bye!